Então, só recapitulando, galera. Isso aqui é um vídeo chamado World Darkest Secrets. É um vídeo que ganhou bastante notoriedade. Vá todo influenciador que ou é de ou, ou foi de ou já fez um react sobre esse vídeo. Estão me pedindo há muito tempo para fazer um react. Eu, eu ainda não vi. Vou fazer aqui um react ao vivo. Eu não sei do que, que é, trata esse vídeo, tá bom? Vai ter legenda em português aqui. E se tiver uma coisa interessante, eu paro aqui para a gente falar, tá bom? Vamos lá, vamos dar uma olhada. Galera, como é que tá o som? O som tá bom? Tá dando pra escutar? Tá dando pra escutar o som a minha voz? Um tá baixo, outro tá alto? Como é que tá aí? Diz aí, tá de boa assim? I'm going to start this off by saying whatever the hell you do, do not look in the comment section below. Though I don't usually get many, if any, comments on my productions, the ones that are there will no doubt spoil what is to come. So go into full screen mode and let me show you this, because I promise you, it's going to blow your mind. I believe I've made a wow discovery that literally no one else has ever found. No matter how much I try to look it up, there's never any results. No duck duck searches, no YouTube videos, nothing. And that's pretty damn surprising, considering this is a game from 2004 that we're talking about here. This is the vanilla WoW world map. As you can see, there's only two continents, Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. Let me ask you a question. Out of all the zones in these two continents, which one is the most forgettable? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Mais esquecível? Zona mais esquecível de todo o ou? Blasted Lands? Não. Swamp of Sorrows. Swamp of Sorrows. All right, time's up. I imagine that the vast majority of people probably answered with Desolus, Silithus, Alterac Mountains, Deadwind Pass, you know, the usual suspects. But there's Desolation. one zone in Vanilla WoW that literally everyone knows about, but is almost universally forgotten. And that zone is Stone Talon Mountains. Stone Talon Mountains is a contested zone that shares a border with the Barrens and Desolus. The fact that it's a contested zone is quite interesting in of itself, as despite there being many low-level horde quests available here, for Alliance players, there's almost nothing at all. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that if you're an Alliance main like me, you've probably never even been here before. The zone itself has an extremely unusual design, and there really is nothing else like it in the game. It's essentially one giant valley that connects to three different open chasms that are completely different to one another. Due to the zone's odd layout and frustrating quests, even many Horde players tend to skip it entirely when leveling. But I'm not here to talk about the zone or even its quests. É verdade, ele é péssima para fazer leveling, horrível. É, eu, devo, eu, eu acabo fazendo quest lá porque, dependendo de onde você começa, você é obrigado a passar lá, senão você tem que dar a volta no mundo inteiro. Mas vale mais a pena você ir para outro mapa do que fazer uma quest lá se você for um elfo. Ele te manda fazer umas quests lá, mas não vale a pena. Até de ordem também não vale a pena. Você tem umas quests aqui, tem umas quests aqui, tem umas quests lá em cima. But something much, much weirder. We all know that WoW has a day-night cycle that is in sync with the server's time zone. If it's daytime in real life, then it will be daytime in game too. If it's nighttime in real life, then it will be nighttime in game too. A zone's atmosphere can change significantly depending on whether it's day or night, but this is true especially for Stone Talon Mountains. During the day, Stone Talon Mountains just looks and feels like a pretty typical looking place. A bit of trees here, a bit of grass there, but at night, this zone and the way it feels to be in it almost completely changes. From the hours of midnight to 5 a.m., music no longer plays in the zone. Instead, all you can hear is this strange wind ambience that sounds really freaky.
What's weirder is that at night, the entire zone has this creepy red tint to it for seemingly no reason, and there's a ton of fog that limits how far you can see. Not sure if you can really notice it here, but the difference when it's daytime is really, well, night and day. Now obviously when I first discovered this, I was confused just as much as you probably are. Why is it like this? No other zone has effects like these at night. It just seems… weird. And again, no matter how much I looked into it, no one had an answer. But that's not even why I'm making this, because yeah, it's weird, but it could just be some sort of attempt at atmospheric immersion. No, I'm making this because of a strange phenomenon that kept happening to my character here. If you know me, then you'll know that I'm pretty much nocturnal, as in seriously nocturnal. I'm always up at night and in the early hours of the morning because that's just how I like it. As a result, whenever I play WoW, it's always in the dark. That's how I noticed how weird Stone Talon Mountains was in the first place. In classic WoW, I had an orc warrior called Warzerk that I would occasionally level up to see what the Horde side of the game was like. Just a way to relax and see what I would have otherwise missed out on on my alliance main. Stone Talon Mountains was one of the zones I ended up leveling in. I remember being taken aback at what a weird, almost psychedelic dreamscape the zone felt like. It reminded me of somewhere where a nightmare would take place. Galera, é, a, em, até em cima do que ele tá falando, eu me lembro da primeira vez que eu entrei em Duskwood, tá? Desculpa, é que como eu joguei muito mais tempo em inglês, os nomes, eu gravei todos os nomes do, do World of Warcraft em inglês, né? Duskwood é aquela região, é, é a terceira região se você tá de humano, né? Aquela região que tem a Darkshire, aquela cidade, né? Que você ataca, que tem o Aman Cumbry, né? Que faz aquela quest, que vem aquela abominação. Cara, eu, eu entrei naquela zona, eu tomei um susto, cara, porque era um clima tão pesado, tão, tão dark. Eu não tava acostumado com MMOs, né? Floresta do Crepúsculo, obrigado. E eu achei o máximo, cara, achei o máximo. É uma das regiões que eu mais gosto até hoje, de todo o World of Warcraft. Tá bem dark, bem dark, que não era comum. E eu não tava esperando também no World of Warcraft, porque as zonas eram mais legaisinhas, aquela é bem dark, até história dark, né? Mas vamos lá. Place. But again, I didn't think anything of it. Eu não joguei muito nessa zona, para ser sincero. This is a screenshot I took at 2:14 a.m. on the 20th of October 2020. I'm in the Windshear Crag part of the zone and as you can see, my character is dead. You're probably thinking that a mob must have got me or something, but no. The reason I took this screenshot is because my character just died instantly for no reason whatsoever. I was just running around doing some quest when he just dropped dead. At first I thought that maybe a high level rogue had got me then vanished or something but I didn't see any and according to my combat log nothing happened. He just died. I kept this screenshot because I thought I would put it in a future production of mine as, at the time, there was a lot of uproar about how badly Blizzard maintained Classic WoW, with there being a ton of bots and gold sellers flying around. I figured it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for there to be bugs like this too as, after all, this is Blizzard we're talking about here. <laughs> Either way, I rezzed up and carried on with my questing before heading off for the night. 24 hours later. And I am, once again, questing in the Windshear Crag. Everything was going smoothly, until once again, BAM. It happened. Again. Instant death, no combat log, just dead. I had never experienced anything quite like this. I mean, yeah, WoW could be buggy, but it's never been this bad. I looked back at the screenshot I took the night before and noticed something really unusual. The time of death on both shots was exactly the same, 2.14 a.m. That was just way too much of a coincidence to ignore. I tried to make a post on r slash classic wow to ask if anyone knew what kept happening to my character, but it got... Não vai me dizer que é o mesmo horário que aconteceu um negócio sinistro em Amityville, tem até o filme, que tinha uma hora certa pro diabo aparecer. Não vai me dizer que é isso. Para quem não viu, a Met View é um é, é um filme não, é uma história real, né, que aconteceu nos Estados Unidos de uma casa que era possuída por fantasmas do mal, né? E aí vai, vários acontecimentos aconteceram nessa casa 
E tinha, eu, eu não lembro se foi a Mitville ou se foi uma outra casa, que tinha um horário certo que as coisas começavam a acontecer. É, e eu, eu me lembro que terminava em quatro, mas eu não lembro se era duas horas ou três horas da manhã. Removed, and then I was banned for no reason. So, yeah, pretty standard. I decided that this was way too much of a coincidence to ignore. So, I conjured a plan. The next night, at 2.14 a.m., I would have my recorder on, just in case my character died again, so that I would have proof of this weird bug in action. The following is what I captured. Nothing. I waited around for a few minutes longer, but it just wasn't happening. I figured that it really must have been just a weird coincidence. Feeling disappointed, I turned off my recorder and carried on questing. But then, boom. It happened again. This time at 2.47 a.m. Three deaths in a row on three different days. But why was this one at a different time than the others? The only difference I noticed between the last shot and the first two is that on the last one, I was at the charred veil part of the zone, whereas with the first two, I was in the wind shear crag. So, I had another idea. What if I went to the wind shear crag at 2.14 a.m. and had my recorder on then instead? Maybe there, it would happen again. So, once again, I set my character there and waited. É a menina. Vem cá. Holy shit. Mas, galera, antes nós vamos falar sobre um parceiro aqui do canal que é o NoPing. O NoPing é um programa que trabalha para deixar os seus jogos online muito melhores e muito mais rápidos. Como é que ele faz isso? Ele faz uma conexão direta entre o seu computador e o servidor do jogo. Porque, infelizmente, aqui no Brasil, a gente acaba jogando os nossos MMOs com uma latência, com um ping muito maior que os outros lugares. O jogador brasileiro, ele acha que o problema é velocidade. Que é só ele aumentar a velocidade, 200, 500, 1 GB de velocidade, que resolve o problema. Só que o nosso problema é a rota. É o caminho da sua casa até o servidor do jogo. Porque o seu provedor vai te dar uma rota toda zoada, que você vai dar voltas pelo mundo e você vai competir com todo mundo que tiver ao seu redor. O NoPing, ele cria um atalho direto da sua casa até o servidor do jogo. E ele acaba com a perda dos pacotes e com o desconex. E além de tudo isso, ainda otimiza o seu computador para aumentar o seu FPS. Tudo isso num programa só. E agora, com a nova rota exclusiva do Ela Link, você tem uma conexão direta lá para a Europa que reduz a latência, mais ainda para os servidores americanos, e você consegue jogar nos servidores europeus com uma latência ainda menor que os servidores norte-americanos. E você pode testar o NoPing sem pagar nada por 7 dias, e se gostar ainda paga 30% mais barato. O que você tem que fazer? Aqui embaixo tem um link, você vai clicar nesse link, baixar o programa, fazer o cadastro e usar o cupom LOJAMS. Só isso, galera. I now had video evidence of this so-called bug in action. But honestly, at this point, I was starting to think there has to be something more to this. Out of curiosity, I wondered that if I went to the charred veil at 2.47 again, if it would happen there too. Sure enough, it did. Não, na verdade é uma merda que fica passando pelo mapa, então cada hora ele passa por um lugar diferente. Por isso que um é uh, naquela ponta do... 2.14 a.m. in the Windshear Crag and 2.47 a.m. in the Charred Vale. I didn't know what it was, but for some reason, at those times, my character would always just drop dead. It was as if there was an invisible GM playing some sort of practical joke or something no, like that. But um not done yet. Oh, the... ele morreu aqui às 2h14 e morreu aqui às 2h47. Pode ser um mob fantasma que vai andando pela zona e aí aqui ele passa às 2h14. E aqui ele passa as 2 47 Se ele tivesse morto, talvez ele visse. Eu não vi o vídeo ainda, então eu não sei. Estou chutando aqui. At the very top of the zone lies the third chasm, the Stone Talon Peak. 
a very leafy and soothing place compared to the other two. I wondered if the weird deaths occurred there too. Sure enough, they did. 2.28 a.m. Ah, então, I tested this again the next day, and it happened. Oh, 2.14 a.m. in the Windshear Crag. 2.47 a.m. in the Chard Vale. 2.28 in the Stone Tower. Oh. É um mob fantasma que começa aqui, sobe para 2:28 e desce para 2:047 aqui. Peak. Every night at those times, my character would die without failure or explanation. It would never happen in the valley part of the zone, only in the chasms at those exact times. This wasn't a coincidence at this point. I tried to see if anyone else was in the zone at the same time as me. But literally no one ever was. <laughs> Not too surprising, as this character is on Dragonfang, which is, yeah, a very dead server to say the least. None of my friends still played, so I couldn't exactly ask them to get a subscription just to test this. And whenever I would ask other people to come to Stone Talon Mountain so that I could watch them drop dead, they were surprisingly <laughs> uncooperative. I decided to do some hardcore research to see if anyone else had noticed this scrubbing almost the entire internet for even a nugget of information. But alas, nothing. Well, nothing, except that two years ago, back when Classic WoW launched, an old Blizzard developer who had long since left the company, Mike Crond, did a Q&A on the r slash WoW subreddit, whereby he answered people's questions about what it was like developing the vanilla game. In his opening remarks, he mentioned that he was behind zones such as Desolus, Feralas, Ashenvale, and Stone Talon Mountains. Despite the Q&A being two years ago now, I noticed that Mike was very active on Reddit, albeit almost always posting about non-WoW related stuff. Now, I'm not usually one to pry, but man, if anyone knew what was going on here, it would be this guy. And I'm in way too deep to quit now. I just had to ask. So I did. Now, I'm going to be honest, I had no idea how to open a conversation with a guy who I don't know, and who doesn't know me. I'm not a journalist, I'm a WoW player. By nature, I'm very antisocial and tend not to talk to people unless they talk to me. But this guy wasn't just going to talk to me by himself, so I decided to try to play it cool. Didn't want to come off as too pushy or anything like that. So I said, Hey there, is it true you worked on Vanilla WoW back in the day? Honestly, I didn't expect to get an answer. But shockingly enough, he responded almost instantly. Yup. Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. The ice was broken. I just had a question about one of the zones. Nothing serious, just some trivia that I wondered if you could answer. Two minutes later, shoot. Talkative guy. I've been on Classic WoW recently and leveling up in Stone Talon Mountains. I've noticed that for some reason, my character dies at set times in the early hours of the morning for seemingly no reason. I know it sounds bonkers, but do you have any idea why that is? It's been driving me crazy for days now. After I asked this, the guy just went completely silent. I'll be honest, I was pretty pissed off. If anyone would know why, it would be this guy, and he just bailed on me for no reason. I figured that all hope was lost and that I'd never know what was behind this, and with my limited audience there was no way I could make a big enough deal out of it to try to get people to figure it out. So case closed I guess. Or so I thought. I am not joking with you, ten months later I get another message from Mike. The message literally just said, the SoCal lady killer. I'm like, what? No response. Guy just goes completely quiet again. The SoCal lady killer? What the heck was that? I thought that perhaps he had meant to message someone else and this was sent to me by accident. Decided to look into it and this is what came up. The SoCal lady killer is the nickname given to an unidentified serial killer who is believed to be behind the murder of three women in Southern California throughout the years of 1995 and 1996. Though there is no direct evidence that links the three murders together, the modus operandi of the killer was seemingly identical in all of the cases, with the victims' bodies being mutilated in an almost identical fashion each time. The three women, all of which were prostitutes, were believed to be lured to a secluded area by the killer, whereby they were then murdered. Again, I had no idea what this had to do with what I asked, 
until I read this part. The first victim was 28-year-old Whitney Fangson. On the 2nd of August 1995, her body was found on the outskirts of the wind shear lumber mill. <laughs> <laughs> Police reports state that she was officially declared dead at 2.14 a.m. <laughs> Four months later, on the 5th of December 1995, 25-year-old Sophie Riven was found in an almost identical state at a hotel room in the nearby village of Los Chared. <laughs> Police reports state that she was declared dead <laughs> at 2.47 a.m. <laughs> The third and final victim was 32-year-old Amy Rassan, who two months later on the 17th of February 1996 was found dead by climbers at the base of Sockle Peak. Police reports state that she was declared dead at 2.28 a.m. Windshear Lumber Mill was the basis for Windshear Crag. Lost Charred was the basis for the Chard Vale. Sockle Peak was the basis for Stone Talon Peak. In addition, the timing of the victim's deaths correlate exactly with the timing of my characters. The mystery had been solved. The seemingly random deaths are an easter egg referencing the SoCal Lady Killer. But... That's a pretty weird easter egg, don't you think? I went to ask Mike what on earth made him want to add that in the game, but again, I got no response. But this time, it was different. You see, in the past when I was blanked, Mike was still actively using Reddit obsessively on a daily basis. But ever since that last message, he had stopped completely. Not many people know this, but the state of California actually has an online public database of all its residents that states basic information about them, such as their criminal record, driving viability, and yes, whether they are dead or alive. Well, you're never going to believe what I found. Michael John Crond, 54, death by suicide. On the 13th of August, 2021, the exact same day that he last messaged me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Crond, World of Warcraft developer from 2004 to 2006, was the SoCal Lady Killer. Stone Talon Mountains, a zone which he designed, is nothing more than a direct reference to the crimes he committed 10 years prior to joining Blizzard. It is an open mockery of his victims, hiding the truth in plain sight while taking great pleasure in how no one else can see it. Typical serial killer behavior. But if you aren't convinced... <risos> pra quem não entendeu, o cara era um programador do World of Warcraft. <risos> que isso? O cara programou o World of Warcraft, programou várias zonas, e aí ele colocou um easter egg na zona Stone Tello Mountains, que numa hora específica quem estivesse ali naquele ponto morria, porque tinha acontecido um assassinato, três assassinatos na Califórnia um, no mesmo horário. Só que, segundo o vídeo, quem matou o assassino, o, o, o serial killer, era ele, era o programador da Blizzard. O cara era o serial killer. E se matou depois que alguém descobriu isso. Convinced yet? Then let me show you this. Every single chasm has a rare mob that is a direct reference to one of the victims. Whitney Fangson died outside of the Windshear Lumber Mill. Meanwhile, in the Windshear Crag, there's an NPC called Taskmaster Whip Fang. Sophie Riven died in Lost Chared. Meanwhile, in the Chard Vale, there's an NPC called Sister Riven. Amy Rassan died on the base of Sockle Peak. Meanwhile, in the Stone Talon Peak, there's an NPC called Sentinel Amma Rassan. The cherry on top. In the only safe place in the entire zone, the Sunrock Retreat, is an NPC called Crond. Crond, the Butcher. 
o cara ainda botou o NPC das vítimas e se botou no jogo com o açougueiro. O cara se botou no nome com o nome de açougueiro. Ah, isso aqui isso é fake. Não pode ser real, cara. Isso é fake. É o cara... Ele inventou isso tudo. Não so pode, cara. Então, a pergunta que você provavelmente está perguntando para você é... Por que? Why would he commit suicide? Well, the answer becomes crystal clear if we go back to the SoCal Lady Killer's wiki page. It reads, After being a cold case for over 25 years, on the 2nd of August 2021, LAPD Police Chief Ed Jens announced that the SoCal Lady Killer case had been reopened due to advances in forensic technology that may help finally bring the victim some justice. Mike Crond knew that he was about to be found out. Thus, he ended his own life as to escape justice. But folks, do you want to know the worst part about all of this? The worst part is... I just made all that up. That's right, Mike Crond is not a serial killer. In fact, Mike Crond isn't even real. Hell, his picture isn't even real. It was generated by an AI. There's no such thing as the SoCal Lady Killer, and my character didn't even die randomly in the Stone Talon Mountains. I just got a friend of mine to use the neutral auction house to trade me a dark rune. Hell, even the character isn't even the same. So, the question you must be asking is, why? Why did I make up this entire story? Well, you see, it's simple. If I can come up with an interesting and somewhat believable story that grips people enough to keep them listening for 20 minutes about the pissing stone talon <laughs> mountains no less, then Blizzard has no excuse to not write a good story of their own, especially with their ridiculously overpaid writing team at their disposal. Dear WoW Law Team, get it together, you absolute amateurs. <laughs> Caraca, sensacional, o final é melhor ainda, sensacional, ai o cara falou, porra, isso aqui tu é tudo inventado, sabe o que eu inventei? Porque se eu, um amador, consigo fazer um vídeo que prende a atenção das pessoas por 20 minutos, como é que os caras da Blizzard não conseguem fazer? Sensacional, esse cara merece um prêmio, Ute. muito bom, sensacional, sensacional, parabéns. Sensacional! Esse plot twist foi sensacional! Ah, tinha que ser um gnomo! Tinha que ser um gnomo! Né? Tinha que ser um gnomo! Ai, ai, ai! Tinha que ser um gnomo! Ah, fui tapeado! Ai, meu Deus do céu, sensacional, sensacional, muito bom. Ai, o final foi melhor que a história original.